So with that preface, I'm happy to welcome our next speaker, who's Kevin Lindsay from Adobe. And he's going to talk about personalization, which I think involves people, personalization and the IoT. Kevin. Thanks, Roger. Good intro. Thank you. Yeah, I want to talk about people, actually, as well. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and, and why I'm here, why these guys asked me to, to come. I care a lot about personalization. It's, it's something that I've been thinking about for, um, move off the squeaky part of the stage. Um, I've been thinking about personalization for a really long time. As you can tell from the, the hair, um, I'm not new to the internet business. Um, I was actually talking a little while ago uh, to, to someone before we started that, you know, I was, I can, I actually call myself a pioneer. I've been doing this for a really long time. And uh, I remember getting up on stages like this and saying, someday, you're actually going to buy stuff on the internet. This is going to be so cool. So um, I think we've moved beyond that. And um, as I said, I, I, I love the topic of personalization. Um, Recently, I've, I've started to really enjoy uh, talking about IoT and, and working with the really smart people that build the products at, at Adobe about how we can um, enable really interesting experiences through IoT. So what I'm actually starting to realize, though, is that um, you know, these, in addition to probably being two of the most hyped topics, IoT and, and, and personalization, um, notice I could have had added um, personalization for millennials in IoT, and then that would have been a really um, uh, buzzword-laden topic but, or, or title. Um, you know, I think that uh, as I started to, to think about this presentation, I came to realize that um, really I think we need to start to think about personalization and IoT as, as somewhat synonymous. Um, when we talk about people, that's really kind of what it comes down to. If you break down this concept of the Internet of Things, are we really just talking about things? Or are we talking about things that, that people own and things that people care about and things that people want to engage with in order to do something? And so that's really kind of where I, I started the notion that was really the foundation for this presentation. So we're going to jump into it. And um, I was saying to one of my colleagues, I'm actually pretty good at getting audiences to uh, engage with me and interact with me, even when I can't even see you because these lights are so glaringly bright and I just know you're out there. So I'm, I'm confident that you will not let me down and you're going to participate with me in this, in this presentation. All right, so moving right along, we're hoping the clicker works. And it does. So I'm at the risk of, of making kind of the understatement of, of this conference. Um, I am going to say that IoT represents some pretty significant opportunity for us. If we look at you know, just a few short years from now, um, where we're going to be, um, we see some pretty interesting things. So first of all, you've heard this stat, I'm sure, at this conference already. We're expecting to see 50 billion IoT devices out there globally. And that's up a lot from, from today. Today, I think we, we see around 23, 24, 25 billion um, IoT devices. So that's pretty huge growth. And IDC thinks that the revenue from people buying these things is going to jump from around 700 billion today to 1.3 trillion. I've actually never had the opportunity to use a T on a slide like this before. I've never talked in trillions before. So this is getting, this is getting pretty cool. And um, in, in some categories, we're going to see some, some pretty major growth and some pretty major opportunities. I ran across um, this just earlier today, in fact, that in the smart appliance category, we expect to see um, by, this, by 2020 around 200 million units shipped. And that's up from 17 million in 2016. So really, really cool. Um, this article I came across talked about the fridge kind of being the very hub of, of the home and the smart appliance ecosystem. Um, so you can let me know whether you think that that's going to really come to fruition um, or not. Um, I'm sure some of you have been to the Consumer Electronics Show in, in Vegas. A couple of years ago, we started having the opportunity to interact with these, with these smart refrigerators. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's just see where, where this all takes us. But the bottom line is, there's a lot of really interesting opportunity here. And whether you are a technologist or a marketer, there's a lot of different ways to think about this. And if you're a consumer, wow. I mean, how do we, how do we really think uh, about 
IoT adoption as a consumer? Or do we have to? Or is it really just going to be something that just as we, as we buy stuff, it's just all going to be connected to the internet. It's all going to be enabling a certain uh, level of connection that, that we have never experienced before. And I think that the other thing I want to say before I dive too far into this is that we don't know all the answers. You're hearing from a lot of really smart people at this conference, but I think there are more questions than answers today. And you guys are all, you know, you're, you're gurus. You're the experts. Look around beside you. You're sitting beside experts. The point is, there's really no playbook here. We're all kind of flying a little bit by the seat of our pants and finding really, really interesting opportunities to embrace these, these developments. So onto a topic that, that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is, is personalization. So when we think about why we as, I want to make sure I wasn't blocking anything. I don't have a screen behind me. Um, why do we like personalization as consumers? Well, I think that the answer is, uh, well, you may have lots of your own answers to this question, but I think that, that one of your answers might be, I just, you know, I have a pretty low bar. I just don't want experiences that suck. When I'm shopping online, just please give me something that works. Make it efficient. Don't show me stuff I'm not interested in. And, and make it somewhat enjoyable. Like, that's really all I'm asking from you. So when we think about it that way, as a consumer, you're probably not really thinking about personalization. You just have a goal. You want to get something done. Uh, you want to buy something. You want to book a holiday for your, for your family. Um, those are the kinds of things that, that you're thinking about. You may not be thinking about today. I want to have multiple personalized experiences when I go online. And we know from our own research at Adobe that that people really do, when we ask them and, and we say, hey, do you like ads that are, are personalized? Do you like content that is relevant to what you're trying to do? Do you like offers that actually make sense given what you've bought before or what others like you have bought? Um, or when you've looked at, at, at certain types of, of articles, do you like to see ones that are similar? And, and, and most people will say yes. You know, our, our research says 85% say yes to this. Um, obviously, mobile is, is very much a part of all of our lives. And when it comes to mobile, you know, we're all engaging very deeply with, with our favorite apps. And so when we think about that, um, do you want the app experience to be personalized and optimized to what you're trying to do in that app experience? And generally, answer to that question is also yes. So when we think about IoT and we think about personalization, clearly, there might be a marriage made in heaven here. We might be you know, thinking about the, the ways that people interact with us are clearly you know, interacting with brands like Adobe or, or brands like you know, uh, Macy's or Nike or Delta Airlines, any one of these brands. The way that, that, that people want to interact with those favorite brands and those, those favorite companies um, is really going to expand. Now, I think we also know that most consumers are not going to be thinking, look, today I'm going to operate in this channel, tomorrow in this one, or at 2 o'clock this afternoon, I think I will enter um, this other channel or this other funnel. They're not thinking that way. They're thinking about their lives and what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish. And they don't care about what kinds of infrastructure considerations or headaches you have to make this all happen. You, they just want it to happen. So as we move along and we dive into the opportunity here, my question is, is IoT really the new frontier for personalization? Is it perhaps so inherently personal in some ways that, that it's, it's almost ridiculous to say, hey, let's personalize this IoT experience. Does it get us actually closer, these various types of IoT experiences, to this notion of the internet of me, where as I move through my digital channels and my physical world, and I'm just trying to do things that are about me and my family and my friends and the things that, that are important to me, um, is, is this actually creating a level of engagement, a, a, a types of interactions that are so inherently personal that if we don't recognize this as brands and companies, um, we'll fail? 
I can't really leave this slide without talking about this particular example. It's a company called Owlet. Are there any new parents out there by any chance? Does anyone have a baby in the house? No. All right. Maybe you want to have one, or maybe you're like me and you're very glad you don't have babies in the house anymore. But the point is, this is a very interesting product. This is, this is an IoT device. See the little, um, the little booty on the baby's foot? It's an internet-connected uh, slipper. And so it is actually monitoring this baby's vitals using something called pulse oximetry, a technology that hospitals actually use to monitor babies that are in neonatal intensive care. And so it's really, really quite cool because what this is doing here is allowing parents to maybe sleep through the night. Um, the customers of these products, the majority of them, 83% of them say that they're actually, uh, they have so much peace of mind and comfort knowing that they're monitoring their baby's vitals that they are getting a better night's sleep. So I would say, and if those of you who are parents and can remember those days, that that is valuable. So this is perhaps an experience that is bringing value, it is so personal to us and so important to us that it is creating a tremendous amount of, of value. Now, in contrast, and I'm not saying that this isn't important, I'm just not a huge plant man, I'm, I don't have a green thumb particularly, but you know, is this as valuable as you know, the, the plant that you let go dry and maybe dies because you didn't water it? Um, there are devices that will ensure that that doesn't happen. And some of you might say, that is extremely valuable to me. My plants are my babies. And so in that case, go for it. So I think that as we think about these types of interactions and the value they bring to us and the opportunity that these companies have to do hyper-personalization, it's really incredible. And I think that as we kind of move through the next few years, we're going to see a lot of gimmicky IoT, and we're going to see a lot of very valuable IoT. Okay, so IoT. What are the real things that we need to think about when it comes to IoT? The very first time I heard this term, I thought it was very strange. I remember thinking, what, what is this? I mean, I, I couldn't actually relate to this concept of things. And it's probably because the, the, the photo that the, the gentleman presenter was using was of a cow in a pasture who had a tag on its ear, and it was a smart tag. And the guy had an app, an app and he was actually able to, to follow his, his grazing cattle around his vast property. And I remember thinking at that time, well, OK, this is interesting. I'm not sure if I really buy into this internet of things. Since then, obviously, I've, I've changed my tune. But I think I've also come to realize that there are a few really important factors that we need to think about. So the first one, and this is one that, that I I've understand just from um, the, the briefing I had that a lot of you are are techies. How many of you are like, would you put yourself in that category? Your IT people, your engineers, software engineers, you name it. Okay, there's a few of you. Okay, so you're the ones that are really into the data aspect um, and uh, you know how all of this is going to work and all this stuff, you know, the, the, the breach that happened that we read about in the news, you know, these IoT, these vulnerable IoT devices. So you're thinking about security and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's great. So we're going to talk about data for just a, a, a minute. So if we think ab about, and I come from the uh, part of Adobe that is very, very data oriented. Um, several years ago, Ad Adobe bought a company that was the leader in digital analytics and brought that DNA into Adobe. And that's, that's the part of the company that, that I live in. So we think about data all the time and we look at this treasure trove of of data, all these people around the world. We actually have a network operations center that has these amazing monitors. You can go in there and see all this stuff that's happening, all these things that are spiking all over the world. It's, it's really, really cool. So I care about data. And when we think about what these IoT interactions is going to give us in terms of data, Wow, it's incredible, like what we can actually measure and, and look at and, and take advantage of as, as marketers to deliver value. Amazing, right? Creepy to some, amazing to others. And I think that that's what we're really going to have to also figure out is to what extent we can use this data and should we use the data and where does it bring value? 
And what are the vulnerabilities? And what are the things we really need to be thinking about from the best practices perspective as far as all this data goes? Because we're talking about an amazing stream, you know, petabytes and petabytes of, of data flying around, you know, that's telling us, you know, this is what we're seeing, kind of average heart rate on babies between the ages of three months and six months, for example. Yeah. Our outlet example is, is providing data that can be acted upon and giving us amazing insights that can be used for marketing purposes as well as you know, many other purposes that, that can benefit society. I think the main thing here is what we're starting to see among um, consumers is a willingness to share data. Most consumers are becoming much more comfortable with sharing data when it's quid pro quo when they know that they can get something for it, like I'm giving you some data, give me some value. That's when consumers become really willing to share data, and, uh, and that's what we really need to be thinking about as businesses and as marketers. And as we're sort of thinking about the blurring of the lines between you know, our marketing outreach and our in-product experiences, and the opportunity that IoT might actually give you to create new product offerings kind of based on using data and, and creating great experiences. Which actually leads us to my second point, is IoT is going to be, it, it's going to be really interesting. We're, we're going to learn a lot about how people want those experiences to take place, where they want those experiences to take place, and how. Many, many of the IoT experiences that were all taking part in today are being manifested on a smartphone or a watch. Some kind of screen that we already have, something that's, that's available to us and, and part of our daily lives. So as I'll share with you in a couple of examples, um, that is, I think, the strategy that many, many companies are taking today. And it's really then this, do you really think of IoT strategy as something separate from your mobile strategy? That's something that's really, really important to, to ask, is because ultimately, at the end of the day, what I didn't kind of break down for you in that first slide was the, the separation of kind of the back end infrastructure spending on IoT and the front end um, experience spending. People ultimately will want experiences that are great, experiences that add value, as I, as I mentioned to you. And so there's a certain amount of spending that will be done on that. And so how will those experiences manifest for your brand? All right, so I guess the way I look at it, therefore, and I'm going to jump into a few examples here, is this is what personalization IoT really means for me. It's using the right data and the right touch points to connect people to what matters to them. So it's not so much about connecting things, People are going to use the things. So you're going to connect people, sometimes to other people, sometimes to experiences, things that, that, that are important to them and will improve their lives, make their life more comfortable, quite literally in the, in the case of you know, the nest, which I actually just I had one put into my house just, um, just recently. Um, so it's still learning. But you know, li you know, quite literally, how, how can we um, uh, you know, create these connections that, that do things th for us? So I'm going to share with you some personal examples since we're talking about personalization. And people that know me um, often say that I, um, I'm actually, I give too much on stage. So you know, if, if that's the case, you can, you can tweet about that afterwards and say this guy uh, tells me too much about his, his life. Um, but um, I, think it's, I think it's important. I think it, it actually makes a point. Um, all right, who knows what this item is? What is it? It's a what? Yeah, it's a dashboard. How many of you have some of these in your house? What? I'm so disappointed. I see one hand over there. OK, now I have to tell you about this one. So we have Amazon Dash buttons in, in our house. Um, we have goldfish crackers, cliff bars, and a few household cleaning items. But I want to talk about this one because it is actually, as you know, those of you who have these, they have a little adhesive uh, strip on the back and you, you can hang them. So if you open up our pantry, we have um, a goldfish uh, cracker dash button on the shelf. And so anytime we're getting low, which 
we get low a little too frequently, in my opinion. But it, that button gets pressed, and guess what happens? A box of goldfish crackers are on their way. So, which is great. So it's very, very convenient. My kids are happy. They love them. They love the, the snacks. Um, but also, uh, and so there's value there, right? Um, but also, think about it from an Amazon perspective. It is facilita facilitating conversions like crazy. So it, we, I think that everyone in here has shopped on Amazon.com or through the Amazon app over the years. And what you do know is that they have tried to reduce friction as much as possible. It's so easy, like with one click, you know, one click purchase, I can just buy so easily and this thing just shows up. Now it's, it's press a button or ask Alexa and the thing is there. So it is so easy to facilitate conversions now. The other thing I find interesting about this particular IoT device is that it's invented for like one purpose. All it does is, is it exists for the sole purpose of, of being pushed so that people can get more goldfish crackers. They have 500 products that you can order through this, a button like this. Can you imagine if you had them all? I could actually you know, have a whole wall display of these things in my home and, and just go in there and press buttons every time we need something. Um, Amazon is also rolling out the, the, the Dash replenishment service that will be built into appliances as well. So once that happens, the appliances will do the ordering. Again, further reducing friction. And again, talk about hyper-personalized, the, the, the detergent of my choice showing up when I need it. Uh, in order to, again, we're talking about these, these kids. These kids produce a lot of laundry too, so we need a lot of detergent in my household. Um, they, they expect in the next two years to be shipping around 20 million of these dash buttons. So incredible growth, a huge innovation, and you know, very smart thinking. It just it gets us thinking and asking questions, and that, that's what I asked you to do at the early part of this presentation. How can these innovations apply to us? All right, here's another one. I also have this, this device. Um, it is um, a scale, but it is not just a scale. As many of you might know who own a device like this, it is, it is very uh, invasive. It actually it can be a very depressing experience or a very heartwarming and uplifting experience. Um, you know, this is all about, and again, when we talk about value here, I'm stepping on a scale, yes, like I always have my whole life, not as frequently as I should, but uh, I, What's happening here is this thing's monitoring my health. It actually even tells me about the air quality in my bedroom, where I, where I keep it. Tells me what the weather is, and therefore maybe gives me some insight into what I should wear today. So very, very helpful. So when we think about back to our data discussion, this is really interesting because I am contributing to a very, very large amount of, of data that in aggregate provide some pretty in interesting insights for how people are, are living their lives. And, and you know, the general health and the you know, overweightness of 49-year-old you know, men living in Los Gatos, California, you know, very, very specific. Again, I'm giving you more information than, than you need. Um, I don't think this weight is actually mine, so um, that's okay. Um, so, there, there's another example, and I think that it's one that, as we think about, once again, the value that it brings, that's pretty, um, uh, pretty uh, changing. And you know, the, the whole, I should just say before I leave that one, that industry is just like crazy. We expect in the next year or so, the health, healthcare, wellness, fitness, IoT industry to hit around 136 billion. So massive, massive growth, ma massive opportunities there. And it's also really significant because it's talking about an industry that can change and a way of like engaging with consumers in absolutely new ways. All right, now this one. One of the things that personalization is supposed to do is occasionally surprise and delight. How many of you ever have digital experiences, website experiences, app experiences that you would say actually surprise and delight and make you happy? Occasionally? Yeah, okay, one or two of you. Great, well that's our goal as brands. We actually wanna do that, believe it or not. We wanna just, not just make it not suck, but have you occasionally be delighted and surprised. This is a really, really cool example in my opinion. It's called a Petsy, and I own one of these too. 
Um, my, I have two dogs, Henry and Finnegan. They're both Labradoodles, so this is not my dog. Um, but what's really, really cool about this internet-connected device is that not only is it a pet cam, but I can press a button and, and it will spit out treats to my dogs. And it will, um, I can communicate with them. I can, I can talk to them. But also, it comes with its own kind of built-in community. So it's like Instagram for pets. And as soon as you sign up, um, we post a picture of Henry and Finnegan. And within 30 minutes, we had something like seven awes. Oh, you know, cute. And, um, and so it gives you this connection, sort of, again, back to the Internet of Things. It's about connection and creating value. And my kids and my wife really like that. They love that we instantly had this in community of fellow pet owners. Now, I just want to say, talk about opportunity. Last year, Americans spent $60 billion to feed their dogs, to groom their dogs, to medicate their dogs, to spy on their dogs, obviously. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm one of those people, obviously. It, it's, it's one of those, those industries that, that might say, look, this is our growth. This is our TAM, our total available market. Where are our growth opportunities for us? IoT is interesting because there may be lots of interesting industries where there are new growth opportunities because of it. You know, and again, kind of thinking about outside the box and thinking about what, what you can bring to market that could change the way you do business um, is really, really cool. One quick story where IoT clashed in my household, and I am not telling you a lie. We were out for dinner, and I opened up the uh, app, the Petsy app on my phone. I'm looking, and there's that. Gosh darn Henry with his feet up on the table, and he was eating the bloody cliff bars that had come from the Amazon Dash that day. Someone put them on the, and he ripped open the box, and we were going, Henry, no, Henry, no, over the app, and he didn't stop. We came home, he'd eaten 18 cliff bars. You can just imagine. Anyway, um, so that's, that's my, those are my IoT uh, experiences, my IoT stories. So I want to wrap up here in the last couple of minutes. And for me, there are some, some takeaways. You guys, many of you are you know, you know, way smarter when it comes to technology than I am. And you're going to go away and you're going to solve a lot of these things for your companies. But I think it's really important that we all step back and we really think about what we're trying to do. So first of all, data. The opportunity to harness it, harness this amazing stream of data that's coming in and helping us to create really relevant connections between the things that we do things that are important to us, people in our lives. Ultimately, it's about the experience and thinking about where will it take place? Will it take place on the app? Will it take place right on the refrigerator door? Will it take place you know, on the watch? Will it take, does it need some kind of screen? Or is it like the dash, something that can just live just completely on its own? Um, mind you, there's the Amazon app. There are there's things like websites and email and stuff that are part of that whole ecosystem. So is, is your IoT device an extension of your business and what you're trying to do, such as that commerce example? And then value, really thinking about the value that it brings. Um, th as I said, there will be some you know, very well-funded ventures around IoT that come and, and go over the next few years, and we're going to figure out what's really useful and what's, what's valuable to us, both to the consumer as well as, as to our businesses. So those are the things I'm thinking about when it comes to IoT and personalization. But what I actually really think is that it represents a real opportunity for brands to get pretty personal and to do it in a really relevant way and in a way that can deliver huge value for, for consumers and for dogs occasionally. All right, so for that, I want to thank you very much for your time and wish you the best for the rest of the conference. Thank you.